Uh, good afternoon, and um, I'd like to introduce uh, Alicia Hill, who is a um, very good entrepreneur who has uh, started off a really fantastic business, and I'm really excited to talk to her about it and for you all to hear what uh, she did and beforehand and how she got into the business she's in now. So good afternoon. How are you today? Good afternoon, Keith. I'm doing awesome. How are you today? I am good, thanks. It's always good to be on a Friday afternoon. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. cooler weather prevails, so I'll take that for, uh, never thought I'd say 92 was going to be cool, but anyway, there's cooler weather. <laughs> Had, right <laughs> yeah it feels that way yeah so um glad you could join us today so uh, tell us a bit about yourself who you are and how you got to where you are yes definitely so my name is alicia hill i'm the proud founder and ceo of acg brand management that is short for a career girl brand management and um i started acg about three and a half years ago uh left a long great career at fedex i uh, worked in global brand marketing and in the freight organization and what uh acg does is i enhance brands for professional individuals as well as companies and small businesses so i help individuals to really uh, enhance their strengths and their talents to get the positions that they want so i help them with their resume writing i have them with interview prep and i have them with brand consulting i also have companies with leadership experience so i do leadership training customer experience training as well as cultural training to help them enhance their culture. So for example, there are so many companies that are have gone remote. And so a lot of employees are working from home. And so in that shift, there's also a mind shift. So not just a cultural shift, but a mind shift of how to work from home, you know, how to still have integrity, still how to keep your customers or your company's mission top of mind. So I do a lot of training on that for cultural enhancements. I also work with small businesses. I help small businesses to grow. I help them to start their business everywhere from a business license, EIN to their website and how to enhance their brand on social media. I help with that as well. So got my hands in quite a few things <laughs> you do indeed yes yeah so um in some respects you work both sides you work both with employers and with employees employees you help them prepare to get the job they want and with employers you help them find the people they want but also keep those people is that right Yes, very, very, very important. And I do that because that helps me stay in the same streamline of my strengths. So my strengths is professional development. Uh, I'm very good at leading and following up and executing plans. And so I helped employees to really understand those strengths that they have and how it fits into the positions that they need. I'm listening to the companies and seeing where they have gaps, where they have leadership gaps, where they need employees and what those skill sets look like. And I help them to marry the two. And sometimes employees are right in their own company and I help develop them as well. So in this uh, development, I mean, are we talking about ongoing education? Is it talk about um, what aspects of development do you help those employees with? Customer experience is one of the biggest ones that I help with. That is one of the biggest things that I get called on a lot for. I have over 20 years of customer experience. Um, I worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car for seven years. I started as a management trainee and I worked my way up to a branch manager and I went on to be the regional car sales marketing manager. When I went to FedEx, I worked in branding and I helped do all of the training create the training as well as execute the training for the FedEx call centers across the globe. And so I trained them on the phone and how to execute the purple promise that FedEx has. And so I've taken that knowledge and experience to help companies with customer experience, helping the employees to understand that they are the face of the brand. Those customer facing employees, they're the face of the brand. They're what people talk about. They're the perception of that company. Another thing is leadership and leadership has been so huge that I decided to create an online course on leadership development for a professional development experience. So I teach there on collaboration, effective decision-making, um, different leadership styles, customer experience, emotional intelligence, uh, the DIS assessment. Mm -hmm. And I do that because so many companies need it. And I'm based in Memphis, but ACG is a global brand. And so having that online course really helps employees to dig right in. So companies bundle and buy the course, and I don't have to necessarily be there because I've done that via video. And I have lots of experts that have assisted me with that across the country, from Cardinal Health to American Airlines, presidents of uh, universities, uh, professional business owners, and so Medtronics. 
So I've had a lot of assistance with creating that online leadership course from leadership of companies that said, here is what I want my employees to know. Here's what you need to be a leader. And what we found is this course is, can be from anyone from a new hire all the way to someone that has just joined a management executive team. It gives you those foundations of a leader and things that you need to know. And so once you download the course, you're able to keep that and refer back to it. And what companies are loving about that is they're able to hold their employees accountable because now they know for sure that they know what it looks like to lead. And it's not about leading for a title. You can lead in any position that you're in from the janitor to the CEO. Everyone has an opportunity to be empowered to lead in any position that they're in. But it's about those mindset and skill sets that you need to have. And the differentiator course, it teaches that. Yeah. Um, so if you finding, you know, we've all heard about the great resignation and all yeah. these things that are going on. Are you finding that companies are much more open to this type of leadership? Yes, it help, that's one of the founding tools that really helps with the great resignation. So the great resignation is happening because people are not comfortable leading in the positions that they're in. They're not leading to their strengths. They're doing things that they don't feel confident in or that they don't like to do. So what I'm able to do with my brand consulting is help them figure out how can I lead where I am? What are my strengths? How can I play to my strengths? And I use one simple tool for that. And that is a book called Strength Finders. It gives you an assessment and it gives you your top five strengths based off of that assessment. And I give them that assessment and we walk through it and we align it to the job that they have or to the job that they want. Everyone feels good about what they do if they love what they do, right? right. When you right. love what you do, it's not a job. Right. And people love what they do if they find it difficult or if they're not well compensated or rewarded, right? And so being able to play to their strengths and knowing their strengths and helping them to sell their strengths to their company helps them to stay with the company. It right. helps give them loyalty. Yeah. Well, I think that's getting more and more important because it's taking so much time and resources to find the right people. Yes. Uh, now we had now employees have to start looking at re retaining those people better. It also seems like a lot of people who um, jumped over for an additional five, six, seven percent in salary are now regretting some of those moves. Uh, it turns out it wasn't it, it wasn't all about the money. The grass is always green on the other side. Uh, <laughs> but once you get over there, you find out it's just as burnt out as it is on the uh, on the place you just left. Right. You're. <laughs> That's one of the important things about playing to your strengths, because sometimes you're going to a role just for the title, just for the position or just for the promotion. And it doesn't lean to what your strengths are. It doesn't lean to what you're good at. And so you find yourself struggling and not happy in that position. Yes, yeah. Do you, I mean, do you think that um, people in general are expecting more from their customer experience? Um from all, all different types of business, you know, from whatever, <clears throat> we'd all been conditioned for a long time that when we when we called the 800 number, it was going to be a, a challenge to get your things answered. Are, are companies looking more to give a better experience on that side of it so people walk away with a better impression of their business? Yes, it's getting more and more critical because the competition is there. But again, how do you differentiate yourself? is through your frontline employees. The right. frontline employees is where the investment needs to be because that's who sees your company. And so it's critical and companies have found that, you know, leadership is lacking. And so that customer experience coming from those employees, you can't just hire them because you can give them a lower pay. Even if you do that, you have to equip them with the right resources, put them in the right environment, and share with them the importance of their job and then give them the right resources to do that. And I do a lot of training with companies on how and where to recruit, how to hire, how to train and onboard, how to retain those employees through, through empowerment and problem solving. And that's how you create that employee development for them. And that's really, really important because that engagement is what they're lacking. You right. have to engage them into the culture, especially with so many working from home. How do you keep them engaged? Well, you have to have frequent one-on-ones with them. You can do happy hours and team meetings via Zoom, but those are things that you have to still do. A lot of companies are not doing that anymore because people are at home, but you have to create and maintain that same culture that you had in the office as well as outside of the brick and mortar. I think it's a, that, that is definitely it's an interesting point. It's also a great challenge because... You, you're on a Zoom call for an hour. 
mm-hmm. and then you're off that Zoom call and you're back in your own work, working from home environment. Mm-hmm. And so it's the challenge for companies to keep that enthusiasm for the job and for their business mm-hmm. when people are out of their sight for so many hours and every working day. And, and I mean, I've heard several stories of um companies that try to track what their employees are doing from home because you know they're still trying to get that productivity and um mm-hmm. the people who are working from home feel imposed on whether yeah. that's right or wrong they seem it seems like they, they feel like they're imposed on because corporate is trying to monitor their productivity is, is that something you come across definitely but the way we've been able to solve that problem with setting the expectations and holding them accountable i've had some companies where we've done lunch and learns where they send Uber Eats or someone goes over and sends the lunch to them. And so their lunch gets delivered, they're on the Zoom and they eat that lunch while they talk. And when you're talking to the employees about their productivity, some things that they've done, and you reward and acknowledge them, you create that healthy competition. So now they want to work because they want to see their name. They want to get that employee of the month or excellent, outstanding. Uh, We have a company that does now that I'm working with that they have a program set up where they catch the employee in the act of executing with excellence. And so they send that email out to everyone. Hey, guess what, guys? I found Peter today executing in excellence. Peter has been caught in the act of executing with excellence. Great job today, Peter, on your call. A great job today, Peter, on your project. Those things are exciting for people. They want to see their names and likes. They want to be rewarded for what they do. So on the flip side of that, you do have to hold them accountable and have those one-on-ones to talk about the things that are not going so well, but you have make sure that you reward and recognize your employees when they are doing well. And with them working from home, it's a big cost saver because you're not having to rent a space and have this big party. You can send out a mass email that just says, caught in the act of executing with excellence, great job today. Yeah. And those things go a long way. Right, yeah. And certainly, um, I mean, your uh, background, um, working for one of the largest global businesses and the challenges that uh, inherent within that, not just working at the, the hub here in Memphis, but working globally. You must have had a lot of experience that you're able to bring to this. Yes, definitely. I've worked with um, our operating companies for freight, for express, for ground. I've worked with supply chain everywhere from London to Dubai, all the way to Mexico, doing those trainings and facilitating and understanding the culture. And that's another thing about hiring. Now you're hiring remote. So people can live in California and work for a company in Memphis where the culture in California is different. So it could be challenging. But again, when you set those expectations and you engage those employees, their culture can now become your culture and you respect their culture in such a way that they're able to work for you and still be respectable. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if if you're in the Midwest, you're on the left uh, west coast or on the uh, east coast um there's a totally different work yes. environments that people are used to um, mm-hmm. from the laid back california to the intense northeast yeah um, and all that stuff that goes into that so it's got to be challenging for people to you know, companies to get the right people in place to have a uniform customer experience across all those different places and that is all about engagement yeah. it's all how you engage the employees. Management yeah. has to take time to engage their employees, to understand and care about what's important to them, not just what's important for the company or what their job role, but what's important to them personally. Yeah. You know, it, it was always exciting times when you would ask someone, you know, how is your child doing? Oh, he's graduating high school. What college is he going to now? People like to know that you care. Yes, yeah, like to know who you are. On that note, um, for you personally, I mean, that was a a big challenge to um, separate from FedEx and start your own business. So what's your biggest challenge in getting going? My biggest challenge has been for me to allow others to do the job that needs to be done. Um, My biggest strength is also one of my weaknesses. I hate to say it, but it's true. I'm an executor. I I just, I, I work in a a high, fast paced, kind of stressful environment. It's how I like to live. And so when things come up and a project needs to be done, I'm the first one that's up for the challenge. But what I've had to learn is 
other people have to be able to thrive and learn. And if I always do myself, I take away the opportunity for them to be empowered and for them to have the experience. Right. So I'm having to learn to say, okay, let them do it. Let them do it. And right. so in my that, I'm very clear in my communications. I set the expectations and I follow up. Right. That allows me to feel a little bit more comfortable about the deadline being met. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a really interesting thing because uh, as a business coach, a lot of people that I talk to, business owners that I talk to, uh, complain that they are too busy working in their business. And mm -hmm. when you actually start asking the questions and look underneath it all, it's because they basically don't trust the team. Yeah. They want to do it themselves, which they may say they trust the team, but they don't. They want to be the person who's doing everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to empower an employee to do something and, yeah. and, and that mindset is, is really difficult for some business owners. It ends up holding them back because mm -hmm. you know, they're so involved. In the, right. Right. Yeah. They're involved so much on the day to day basis. And, you know, as we try to explain to them, the value of your business is going down the more you're involved in it. But if somebody yeah. wants to buy it and you're not involved in the business, anymore what happens to the rest of the business if you're such an yeah. integral part and so that's a, that's a, it's an interesting point that you know that you've accepted that you have to empower people that are with you to be able to perform those tasks and right and that confidence that the job's going to be done but again it's accountability right so we're all talking about accountability here on both sides of the table you have to yeah. be accountable to them and they have to be accountable to you so if, if somebody was going to start a uh, start a business next week what What's your advice other than think about it twice before you get into it? <laughs> know your competition. Yeah. Know your industry. That is the biggest thing. And I learned that from FedEx. You have to know your industry, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an executive, or whether you're an employee. Know and understand your industry. What's out there? How can you innovate and differentiate yourself? Have a plan for that first. Yeah. Because that will give you the answers to so many other things you need to know. How to go after your target audience. Where is your target audience? What is their need? How do you fulfill their need? And what's your price points? You won't know any of that if you don't understand your industry and your competition. Yeah. That's where I start. Yeah, that's a differentiation is, is know what differentiates you from your competition. Mm -hmm. You know, find something that says, you know, this is why this is why we this is why we're different. Yeah, because um, based on that, you can charge whatever you like, mm -hmm. as long as you can justify it to your people that this is this is our difference. This is the value we bring. That's why you are going with us as a company because we're bringing extra value to to mm -hmm. the proceedings, to to the uh, meetings and everything. Um, and I think things that differentiates ACG from other consulting and career companies is I'm on both sides of the fence. I see and talk to the employees and I see and talk to the companies and I'm able to marry the two very well. Well, yeah, I would mean, imagine so. I mean, it, it, there can't be many people in your in your space that have the experience that you have. I mean, that's got to be it's got to be an invaluable piece right there is to have all that experience that you can bring, especially, again, working for such a global brand as Federal Express for that. So uh, any, any other uh, how do people get in touch with you? Yes, I want to let you know that my website is acareergirl.com. My email address is Alicia, that's A-L-I-C-I-A, at A-C-A-R-E-E-R-G-I-R-L.com. Alicia at acareergirl.com. My phone number, I'm always available. Uh, as an entrepreneur, many of you probably know, or you will learn that you're never off. You're always on, no matter what time of day it is. So my phone number is 901 402-1002. And again, I just launched my very first online course on leadership development called Differentiator. And it has all the tools that you would need as a leader. So it really helps employees to become leaders and it helps companies hold their employees accountable for the leadership role that they're in or going into. So definitely check out my website or give me a call. Sounds great. I know you got something else. Uh, you got another course that you're uh, doing this afternoon. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Hope you have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Have you're a great welcome. week. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.